All right. Paul, Philippe, am I, or is it Philip? Yeah, as you like, Philip, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Paul, Philip, um, director of the Peculiar Abilities of Mr. Mall. You were nominated by Mary Lee Belli, um, also a great filmmaker. And uh, I got to tell you, Paul, it's a really masterful work. Um, the film is really something um, that stands out. You know, it's beautifully shot, really well directed. Um, there are some very creative um, camera work that's done. And the story is compelling. It's very unique. Um, Paul, I'm going to hand it over to you to tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, whatever you'd like to share before we dive into the questions. All right, so where should I start? Uh, I, I have to say, starting with myself, where does the filmmaking idea came from? It started very, very early on, like when I was a child. It, it, it was um, actually in this, I, I, I was not allowed to watch television. We didn't have even a television at home. So for me, going to the movies was something really extraordinary. Mm. So that's what I was every month looking forward to. Wow. So, and then going to the movies and coming out, it was a totally new world for me. It changed my life every time I went to the movies. If it was a movie which had somehow placed a deeper meaning of life uh, after, after I watched it. Yeah. And uh, so th that was the, the core where I started to think this is the, such a powerful thing to make people think about the world differently and movies in general. And so I just started to think about movies and wanted to try to do it myself. And that was just the very beginning. And um, I have to say, it, I went various ways in that direction and um, the to, to really do a film which means could mean something to people it took me very long to find a subject to find a, a matter and um, I just didn't want to do it just because of doing a film I just was really searching very very long for that moment where I said that is my subject now where I feel at home, which I want to put all my energy in. Mm. And so I, till that time, I just kept trying to, my skills more professional. And I worked like 20 years in commercial advertising, filmmaking, just to put all the skills you need to filmmaking to a certain profession. So if I'm at that point where I say, okay, now is the time for me to make a film uh, that I'm ready to do it and not just start to learn certain things. Of course, there are always things to learn with every project, but just the, the craft and the skills crafting, this, that's what I practiced very, very long until that moment came for the first film which you just mentioned well it's it's gorgeous it's beautiful it's 100 percent professional i mean it's you know high high quality film and it's particularly interesting you know i've seen a lot of films doing this and there's a tremendous amount of talent out there and i um told a filmmaker recently who i interviewed that i'm starting to believe that talent isn't unique it's it's sort of like a collective pool that we all share and it's just incredible. But I will say you have demonstrated a very poignant skill set for this psychological thriller. You know, you have a very sort of, um, it's incredibly dramatic with, uh, you know, there's just a house, there's four people, um, right? Yeah, four people. And um, it is, uh, well, if you count the child's imagery, but um, so, it, you know, and it's it's a really kind of a unique flavor. So definitely, you're you've got this honing of your of your kind of unique kind of eye onto the subject matter. 
And, you know, transitioning to the first question, I, you, you kind of said the, the general terms of what brought you to filmmaking and how you really wanted to hone your craft for the 20 years and then kind of jump into the real just artistry of it and do it at a high level of professionalism where you understand the craft part and you can just focus on the artistry of it. Um, this subject, you know, child abduction, a very unique kind of uh, historical look at it and from a very interesting lens of this uh, person, uh, this agent, um, police investigator who has potentially a special ability. We're not sure if it's extrasensory or not. Um, it's maybe just highly deductive reasoning um, with yeah. also some insight. You know, he mentions the metaphor of the horse uh, as well. And what's, what's really fascinating to me is, well, th th there's a lot of commentary and that's what I try to really get into is like, what is the film saying? And um, it's really interesting how the subject is juxtaposed against this sort of potential phenomenon that is extrasensory or just deductive reasoning, whether it's real or not, there's, there's this play there. And I, and I wonder, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but kind of a broad overview for the listener. And the question is, why this particular subject? What is the inspiration within your own experience, heart, body, mind, soul, that brought you to that subject as your first piece? Yeah, there are um, several things came together at one point. Um, one matter was that I was reading about cases uh, which happened in that time. And um, at that time, it uh, hit me emotionally uh, more than maybe before, because in, at that time, uh, my son was born. And so I had a special connection to stories where children just disappear, just like that. And I somehow had the feeling Maybe it's worse for parents if children just disappear and it's, it's worse than if they know they're dead or something. Maybe it's worse if they don't know anything for the rest of their life. So that was a moment where I really could attach emotionally very, very deep in that moment because I, I think it, it changed a lot in my life when I uh, had a son. So at that point, this was uh, the, the subject which emotionally touched me. And on this other page is uh, the historical, the German historical background, which somehow is, it, it's not with everybody in Germany, but at least with my uh, um, like education, it, like, it was a subject which was always there, even at school, the German history. It, it's a very big, like overshadowing theme. Uh, and for me, as a German, it's something which is always somehow there. And um, so, somehow it's everything needs to be related to it somehow. And even if people say, hey, you're not the generation, uh, responsible for what happened uh, in German history, it's still something you're connected to because you're somehow German and it's a part of your history somehow. And even if I'm not, or my generation, not directly responsible for what happened, somehow I feel at least responsible for what will happen, like in the future. And maybe we can try to change that or to influence that. And um, that, that's why I'm very much connected to historical German uh, topics, because if you work on the past, what happened, it always says something about the today and the tomorrow. And um, like uh, in, in that case too, and 
even if we look at history at the very moment, um, just a little thing which I just heard like a few days ago that in the Ukraine, children got like uh, robbed to Russia while uh, in, in the last weeks. So it, it's, it's so like history is repeating. And if, if I always think if we can do just a little something, learn something out of history or to make people think again what they could learn about history. And that's a big thing which in all my projects I'm working on is one of the topics. And um, so these two things came together at one time, like my or three things. My son was born, I was reading about that typical special German history fact and um, the general historic uh, burden which I always had in my life to, to think about. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, you know, I definitely can appreciate the sense of responsibility for whatever you inherit. You know, we inherit the world and then we pass it on. And the idea is to make it better if we can um, and minimize suffering. You know, um, I assume you were born when there was still an East and West Berlin in Germany. Yes. And were you born in the East or the West? In the West. You were yeah. born in the West. Yeah. Um, and this story takes place um, at that time and under those circumstances, you know, I think, um, of course, I, I can appreciate, you know, having a child and experiencing that. I also had a child uh, recently, about three years ago. And, um, you know, the, um, you know, I think my biggest worry at the time was, you know, just having a healthy baby, just want a healthy baby. And then, um, you know, of course, you you see this child grow up and, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a whole thing, right? you know, this roller coaster, good, bad, whatever, everything in it. And, and it's really challenging, um, you know, for the parent to grow into being a, a parent um, that is a mature parent. Um, so, you know, it definitely there's, there's that sense of child and responsibility and love and affection and attachment. Um, but, you know, my question is, it's not just like, oh, you have this great responsibility. What if it's gone? And it would be more scary to um, know that it's unknown. There, there is, there's never, you can never rest with the unknown. And, and that's what I want to dive into a little more when asking, trying to get a little deeper into that kind of kernel of, of inspiration is, is wrestling with that unknown is potentially even more difficult than knowing something bad, right? Then knowing what it is that you don't want to know and that unknown kind of never having closure with it. And I think that's really what I'm hearing and, and that restlessness to never be able to heal from it. What are your thoughts? I think it's, it's the hope which hurts the most because the hope never dies. Like in, in just to come back to the story in the film for it, just the, the hope the parents have that that child will live and will come back one day, this hope somehow will never die. I think that's something very human and that's the very bitter part because this hope keeps the suffering going and going and going. And um, even if you lose hope, if you have, if you see that maybe your child is dead and know it, and maybe the hope is gone, but then also it's a different way of working, working on, on the situation with yourself and everything. So I think that this, with this, that, that these are the two very intensive feelings, hope, which is always longing for the best, and the worst situation on the other hand, and these two tearing apart left and right and never stopping the tearing you apart 
this is the actual um, di dilemma. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. yeah um, I think that's that's a really um, interesting and and very poignant paradox. And I guess if you frame that within you know the specific context of your film and and that storyline with the child abduction and are they alive or dead and then you know into the historical context of um the war and the cruelty that happened um it's how do you reconcile that you know how do you reconcile that hope if you if you don't have an answer how do you move on yeah i mean i think you you somehow start losing yourself mm. i think um i think moving on without knowing is somehow um yeah that, I, at, at least that was always my vision how do the parents feel how would they feel and they somehow they are not in their body anymore mm. they are they are looking at themselves from outside somehow and continue living their life, but they're not themselves anymore. So because they lost something very important, they lose themselves somehow mm. because they, they can't be true to themselves somehow anymore. Mm. That's uh, mm. what I, at least was my uh, idea of the situation. Mm. Mm. So bringing us to the second question, which is, you know, very much along the lines of what we're discussing, but I think more, if you had to state what the film, the message of the film is, what would it be? What is it? I start like this. Some people say like, oh, another film about historic situations. Didn't we hear enough about the past? Why don't we look into the future? And I think that's exactly the point. If we don't look at the past, we can't have a clear look what, will, what the future will be. So I think everybody should like work on subjects on the past to, to learn something for the future. So the past, is like closed, but the future is like unknown. So um, I think it's never done with the past. So for me, it's like, um, even if we don't talk about film, but in general, people being together, um, everybody talks unconsciously, what happened yesterday? What happened a year ago? What happened 10 years ago? This is part of our life. We, we are never only living now and in the future. It's always the past and the future is one that, that connects to each other in every uh, sense. How I was treated in my childhood somehow reflects on my son, even unconsciously, through me, through my doing. So it's everything connected. And that somehow, um, I try the message of not only this project to to go through something from the past to learn something for the future and not learning in like uh, education, but learning to think about what could be in the future to do, to change, how should the world be? And in, in that case, it's really um, people who now, who are now uh, in their younger adolescence years uh, somehow they don't even know what happened in germany like 70 years ago and somehow i think it's never too late to all to to create content to create stories where also young people can attach to and find it in the first moment interesting or thrilling or whatever and in the second moment it moves them to think about the past and think about in the same way then to the future. And um, that's always something which I think is very um, 
was always fulfilling for me when I went to the movies and had a film where I came out and I felt something changed in myself from thinking of me, the past, the future. And um, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, you know, I, are you working in Germany right now? Yes. Yeah. So in America, I don't think anybody watching this film um, and, you know, I interview people and talk to people and, you know, across the world. And I, I don't think anybody would say, oh, another film about, you know, historical atrocity or I, I don't think that would be the case. I think here in America, people are very much and internationally thinking of, you know, reflecting on history and even with the 70 years it's it's like it's hard to believe that what happened happened it's just unconscionable you know the mind just how did people do this i i recently watched another film um it was uh, one or two filmmakers prior to you and it was about uh, polish circumstances during the war and you it's just the dynamics, the psychological dynamics under that kind of a pressure, you know, of life or death, it's just, you know, such an extreme study of the human condition, you know? And so, you know, I, I certainly, you know, would encourage you, no, that's, that's, you know, I can understand maybe people, you know, in Germany growing up and feeling like, I just want to get away from this. I don't want this baggage. And I, can you know relate or sympathize or understand but you know it's i think very you know um a very brave act and a very important one for people like you to remind us of the light and the dark and you know to pursue the light and to learn from the dark and um you know, it's a powerful film. Um, the last question is, how have you been changed since making this movie? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, if you talk about psychologically, I somehow maybe should ask people around me that <laughs> like, uh, but um, like from the things I noticed, it's more like from a, also filmmaker point of view that I very much learned again how important it is to continue even if it somehow feels like it will never end and to like to be persistent and and yeah keep keep going and keep going even like it feels like it's a never ending task and um it, there, there were moments which i said no no i will stop i will never ever continue that and somehow something kept me going over years and years and years and and even my wife said sometimes, why are you doing that? You could just leave it and do something else which you have more uh, fulfillment with. But somehow I needed to keep going. And in the very end, I somehow learned uh, to, to even overcome that feeling of never getting somewhere, the feeling of mm -hmm. defeat. Yes. Um, Hopelessness. Yeah. Yes, yes, really. To, to overcome that and keep going and, um, and reaching a point where then you never thought before you, you would come to, which you even mm. didn't see. So I, I also have to say, maybe that's, I don't know if that fits perfectly to the question, but, but uh, the film, how it came out in the end, is, and I have to explain that, is 
much better than I ever could have, could have imagined. And that is because I work together with a lot of very, very inspirational, talented people. And my vision like came to an end and to, to gather with all the other people and their visions came together and it got bigger through the community who did the film in the end. So um, that was also a point of keep going, keep going. And I came somewhere I never would have imagined that this place exists. So this is something which I felt is something very great. And even if you, I think now for, for the future, for me, even it's still hard to go through these times where you don't have the hope to get somewhere. I always have the, the, the feeling that maybe I will get somewhere which I cannot imagine now how it would be. And right. this somehow keeps me going because I'm very curious. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. I'll tell you what, you know, what inspires me about talking about movies and talking to artists about the movies they make is this very thing that you're talking about and it's how the movie reflects the inner and the outer circumstances of the artist. And so we're talking about a film where in the film, the parents lose hope. They sign the papers because they're ready to move on. But you, you didn't. You haven't. You gained it. You know, and you're continuing it. And it's just a beautiful paradox of the growth of, you know, the heart, the soul, the mind. And it's just wonderful, man. Um, it is a pleasure to have you on the show, Paul Philip. How do you say your name in German? And German, totally German, it's Paul Philip, but in English, I would say Paul Philip, but yeah. Okay, it sounds like I'm butchering it. I, I sounds like I feel like I need an accent to do it justice. No, Paul perfect. Philip, thank you so much, man. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Great work. Keep it up. I look forward to the next film. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much for your uh, special questions, which are very different to all other interviews you do for film. So I think it's very great to have this alternative view on filmmaking from you. Oh, Thanks. Time. Thanks for your support, man. I appreciate it. It'll keep me going. Keep hope alive. Thank you very much. All, right. all blessings. Till next time, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.